Hello! For those of you who aren't new, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, hi, I'm Jazzy Okami. I'm an illustrator, graphic, and motion designer, a small streamer, and YouTuber, and just a fan of being a fan of things. Today, we're going to be talking about style. style. Your artistic style, to be precise. This is for people who are new to the art scene and trying to pave their way, trying to find a place to get started, or for people who are going through artist block. I want to talk about how to get your own style and how I got mine or came to the realization that I finally achieved my own style, as well as who or what inspired me to create in general. Now, what is your artistic style? Well, your style is akin to how you dress or how you talk. It's an extension of yourself. It's what makes you feel comfy. It's what makes you feel like yourself. Your style is specific to you and it's garnered over time with practice and exploration and experimentation. It is how you portray yourself through your art. There is no one right way to go about achieving your style, but I'm going to tell you how I did it. Step number one, the major thing, is to make art. I know the hardest step is the first step to take, but once you do take it, don't stop. I know PewDiePie recently started drawing and he's improved massively. Uh, I know given he has certain privileges and he has more time maybe than others, but the key thing here is to be persistent. Don't even worry about time. You've got the time. Your path is not the same as others, so don't compare yourself to other people. Rome is not built in a day. So just like you garner any other skill, it takes time, it takes patience, and it takes practice. So start now. Second thing here is get inspired. Like things. What are you obsessed about? Do you like sports? Do you like anime? Do you like movies? Do you like video games, music, what have you? Um, get inspired by those things. If you are interested in a certain artist, look up their work, see what they did, and use that as study references. And you don't have to use the same medium they do either. Practice with different tools. You know, having gone through elementary school and like having art classes, I took advantage of the fact that we learned a lot of different ways to create art. We did origami, we did oil pastels, watercolor painting, uh, we drew with scented markers that I really enjoyed. <laughs> Pencil, paper, napkin, tablet, what have you. It's all up to you, and you can choose whatever. You can choose multiple, you don't have to just choose one. See what tools you enjoy using the most. Another thing to piggyback off of getting inspired, travel, go outside, take yourself out on like little coffee dates or something, treat yourself. Nature is the world's biggest inspiration, so going outside, doing people studies, cafe studies, uh, animals, nature, all that stuff is really helpful. It's really nice if you treat yourself before, during, or after your drawing or creating session. I know a lot of people with social anxiety are like, Ugh. I mean, I get it. I have that. <laughs> but trust me, going somewhere else, being in the sunlight or what have you, just being in a new area, maybe going to your friend's house even, and just hyper-focusing on what you're doing can help. If I'm inside in my own place, I'll play music too, and that kind of brings me to another world as well. Another thing is, do not overthink. Don't treat these creative sessions as like a one huge project that you must get done with a due date. Like it's don't put so much pressure on yourself to get good so quickly and don't compare yourself to others either. This is why I don't look at Instagram as much either because I suffer with imposter syndrome and all that stuff. And it's, it's nice to just stay away from social media every once in a while and just focus on your own goals in life. Like I said, you, your path is your own. It cannot be compared to anybody else's, so don't overthink. You are your worst enemy, and if you don't treat yourself right, you're gonna, you're not gonna get anywhere. Also, whenever you feel comfortable, try sharing your art. You don't have to. I mean, you can just make art for art's sake and just do it for yourself, which is great. But to kind of just ramp up your improvements, don't be afraid to share it. I know sharing it out with social media there's always the risk of somebody saying something that makes you uncomfortable, but also share it with your family or friends. Constructive criticism is great, so I would just seek that out voluntarily in a consensual space. This doesn't include people who just randomly criticize your work without asking you. I hate it when people do that, but you know, who's to stop them, right? Good criticism isn't a personal job, therefore you shouldn't take it personally either. I know some people say the real world is worse than school, but 
I graduated from an art school, so we were <laughs> exposed to criticism very early on. And I must say, having your art torn apart and having fellow students criticize your work who don't really know how to critique quite yet as they're learning along with you, totally different from having your peers or director critiquing your art, that's for sure. If you're able to reach out to a fellow creative that you enjoy, um, see if they can critique your art or look at your portfolio. Make mistakes. I know universally mistakes are seen as a bad thing, but how are you going to learn otherwise? These mistakes will help you gain your own style. And honestly, those mistakes may turn out to be something really cool. Lastly, be kind to yourself. Celebrate your achievements. You don't have to like draw two hours every single day if you don't have the capacity. I feel like that's something akin to like exercising where you have to build yourself up to something like that if you wish, but doing two or five minutes of a drawing, if you drew on a napkin today, good for you. Like you did something and that's the next step in getting better. A little effort is better than none. And if there's a day where you just don't feel it and you don't put any effort into creating something, don't beat yourself up about it. Rest is important. If you feel overworked, whether it be because you're practicing too much or like other outside forces, whether it be like your full-time job, family, or what have you, please rest, show yourself some grace. Allow that time to, I don't know, sleep or get inspired even more. Consume things that you enjoy because that'll add to your visual library and your brain and it'll make you happy. And it's all about balance, right? You gotta treat yourself right. Don't be too hard on yourself, but also hold yourself accountable. Give yourself time. Analyze your work. Look at where you've improved and look at where there are spots where you could do a little bit better. Um, I personally have kept a lot of my sketchbooks from back in middle school and it's really interesting to look back and just see how far I've come. Also allow yourself to pivot and change your mind if need be. If you're not liking the direction you're going, you're allowed to start over. You have the time. Okay, I'm going to finally talk about the moment I realized I've achieved getting my own style and how I even got there in the first place. So a lot of my peers and friends consider my art to be anime inspired with a mix of realism to some people. My major inspirations, my major hyper fixations are music, anime, and video games. I need all three of these things in my everyday life to function. And these three things have been a part of my life ever since I was a child. I grew up in a multicultural family, so that exposed me to a lot of different types of music and that also helped me branch out and experiment and find my own genres to enjoy. I started watching anime like Sailor Moon and Pokemon when I was a little kid. Um, my cousin had VHS tapes of Sailor Moon movies and I watched a lot of Kids WB and 4Kids TV. There was a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, Tokyo Mew Mew, Digimon, Pokemon, all that stuff and Studio Ghibli movies. And as for video games, I took interest when I was around six years old, like in kindergarten. My dad had a PlayStation and he had a bunch of sports games. And then he had one game that stood out to me, which was Final Fantasy VII. And after playing that, well, I grew to like other video games like Kingdom Hearts, Okami, other Final Fantasies, God of War, Assassin's Creed, a bunch of other stuff. So. Yeah, can't stop, won't stop. I started drawing when I was really little, probably around three to four years old. My grandpa who worked at a country club at the time would bring home the paper menus that they had. I guess they used paper because they changed it up every single day. That's what I'm assuming, but wow, what a waste. My grandpa would bring a lot of them home so he could use it for his own crafts and for me to draw. Cause on the backs of these menus, it was just blank. So that was kind of, my version of printer paper for the time being since we didn't have a computer or a printer at the time. I would also buy like tracing paper too because one huge thing that helped me start drawing was coloring books. Whenever I finished a page and I wanted to color it again, I would trace over it and voila, I could color that page once again. And doing that over and over again gave me the muscle memory to, you know, get used to the shapes and the forms of things. And then I started borrowing books from the library, like how to draw books, but also other subjects that I was interested in. Animals being one major one. I love wolves, they're my favorite animal. Any type of dog that looked like a wolf, like Huskies, German Shepherd books, um, Lion books, because I also love The Lion King, other Disney books and other children's books like Arthur, stuff that I could like look at and try to imitate through drawing. And middle school was a pivotal moment for me in my journey towards 
getting my own style because I started to watch even more anime than I did before. As a little kid, I had no idea the stuff I was watching was even considered anime, you know? And then learning about the term anime and realizing how the styles differ from American cartoons, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. That's why their mouths don't match the words that they're saying. That's why their eyes are so big. So in middle school, it was around that time Kingdom Hearts 2 came out, which was a very huge moment in my life and for many other people too. I would print out the concept art. Creative Uncut has been like my go-to site for years and years and years. They have a lot of awesome concept art you can look at and they still update it to this day. And that's when I also started watching Naruto and just Toonami in general. In terms of artists, my biggest inspirations, just to name a few, are Misashi Kishimoto, Tetsuya Nomura, Naoko Takeuchi, Tite Kubo, Don Bluth, Glenn Keane, and Hayao Miyazaki. It's really nice to see how the different artists that you're inspired by evolve their art as well and evolve their style. I started making OCs. I feel like that's the middle ground between doing your studies and making original work. It's fan art. I think in my journey, personally, there have been like four phases in trying to develop my style and one starting with gathering your references and doing studies to drawing your ocs trying to make it as accurate to the style you're studying as possible three doing fan art to apply what you learn but also see how your developing style might look from the one that you're inspired by and then finally making your own original art and after some time patience and practice i came to a point in my creative journey where the consensus from my peers and clients would be that, yes, I have a specific style. And then I started to get commissions and freelance work because people wanted my specific style. Starting at ground zero and going up, up, up as you keep practicing and practicing, once you hit like flat ground, I guess, not a plateau, but like flat ground, like where you're the most consistent for a longer period of time, I think that's the spot where you figured out your own style. I'm really excited to continue this journey. I know there is stuff that I personally want to improve on. Um, back in the day, I really hated to draw hands and now that I'm older, I don't hate it as much, but now I need to practice environments and stuff, ugh. And you know, being an illustrator and a graphic designer, this stuff can be applied to designing as well. You know, getting inspired by different designers and trying to replicate their stuff through studies and seeing what works for you. I think it's the same concept. But yeah, the goal is to just keep experiencing things and to keep getting better at what I do because I love what I do. And with that being said, I do want to post more art and design related stuff to my channel. It's just, it, I'm so used to doing it through Instagram or TikTok. YouTube is a very different thing, so I just have to muster up the confidence. I do want to share with you my sketchbooks and take a look back at things and kind of recreate old drawings or old concepts and OCs and keyblades that I made. Uh, if you have any suggestions as well, I'm all ears or all eyes since you're gonna have to comment down <laughs> in the comment section below. But yeah, I hope this, this helps somebody. Um, this is the very first uh, YouTube video where I'm like posting a bunch of my art in between these segments and I'm not used to talking to the camera for this long since it's just either me playing a video game and like reacting to something or I'm putting different video game clips in between me speaking so. But if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more of me. I hope you guys have a wonderful day or evening wherever you are. Uh, don't forget to laugh and take care. I'll see you next time. Bye. Y'all, I filmed this like three times within the span of the year. What the fuck?